I have come across a fellow that I was previously unaware of. Uh, Catherine Kirsten of the American Experiment was not unaware. Stanley Kurtz at the National Review, both of whom we're reaching out to, was not unaware. And his name is Brian Lozanski. L-O-Z-E-N-S-K-I. And Brian is a department chair and associate professor at McAllister. And he has been selected, among others, by Governor Walls to lead the curriculum development for ethnic studies for the schools in Minnesota. And Mr. Lozinski has some interesting ideas, chief among them, the uh, basically, uh, to without exaggeration, the overthrow of the country. And what occurred to me in reading about him, and you'll hear from him in a moment, we reached out to him as well. I'd love to talk to him. Uh, in the audio we're going to play of him, you're going to hear the absolute definition of the mystery, which I can only claim to have stumbled upon over the years, because I kept saying uh, the mystery is brought to us by people who want a different country. They don't. Not, they don't want the United States. Before we uh, before we play. Mr. Lozinski, let me tell you more about him. He's the Associate Professor of Urban and Multicultural Education and Chair of the Educational Studies Department at McAllister. He, uh, he received his doctorate from the University of Minnesota, where he studied the cultural context of teaching and learning. His research explores the intersections of critical participatory action research black intellectual traditions in, ed in education, ethnic studies, pedagogies, and policy, and cultural sustainability in the education of youth of color. Prior to pursuing his Ph.D., Dr. Lozinski taught in public schools for over a decade in his hometown of Philadelphia. Then he moved to St. Paul as a teacher and Educator researcher, he has worked with youth, educators, parents, school districts, higher education institutions to develop perspectives and strategies that aspire toward social justice while illuminating the historical realities that, that have created current educational disparities. Uh, he has publications in educational research journals, such as the Harvard Educational Review, among others. He has a book called My Emancipation, Don't Fit Your Equation, uh, Critical Enactments of Black Education in the U.S. That was published in 2022. So uh, he's been instrumental in the recent development of ethnic studies in Minnesota, including, a, including facilitating a working group to create the first ever ethnic studies teaching licenses in the state, which are among the first in the nation. In 2021, he was named a fellow by the Bush Foundation in recognition of his local leadership in educational transformation. He's the proud father of three daughters. And Alpha News and the National Review uh, both uh, came upon... Uh, a, a, a snippet of audio that Dr. Luzinski said, I guess in some areas, this is now not available on uh, that when I'm you go sure to find of. it. Okay. I'm not sure. I think this was in 2021. I think he was talking about critical race theory. And here is Dr. Luzinski, presumably from his office at McAllister, talking about critical race theory. And we're also sometimes lying on ourselves when people say like, oh, we can we use critical race theory in school. We don't use critical race theory in school. The first tenet of critical race theory is that the United States as constructed is irreversibly racist. So if the nation state as constructed is irreversibly racist, 
then it must be done with. It must be overthrown, right? And so we can't be like, oh no, critical race theory is just about telling our stories and divert. It's not about that. It's about overthrow. It's, it's insurgent. And we, we need to be, I think, more honest with that. And I, and it's funny that they, you know, they don't understand critical race theory, but they actually tell some truth when they're like, yeah, it is anti-state. <laughs> you can't be a critical race theorist and be pro-US, okay? It's a, it is an anti-state theory that says the United States needs to be deconstructed, period, right? Like that's, you know, and so I think, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting argument there. And that's why I'm a critical race theorist. <laughs> All right. I, I wish he would join us because I want to ask him what that would look like. Um, I did email him. No, last we all night. have. I mean, and, but we also contacted the McAllister Public Relations Department as well. Sure, and his right number. Back. And his number. Correct. Which is listed right in his, his website biography. Yeah. And Correct. this is this right. fellow is uh, apparently highly regarded by our governor. He's been brought on board. Uh, critical race theory to. Uh, a, a leader in the movement, which he is, means the the overthrow of the country, a deconstruction of the country, which is the mystery. We must eliminate this country and recreate it. And I would love to ask him what that looks like. I would love to know what uh, what role he would play in the new country. What where is this going? And I I would hope that he gets a hold of us. Uh, the many, many sites are getting on to this. This is one more building block in our knowledge that Tim Walls is anything but the flannel shirt wearing America's dad. There's a uh, Tim Walls is a powerful force. Powerful. That has never really revealed what he's a powerful force for. Uh, Stanley Kurtz writes in the National Review, this was as recently as just August of this year. If someone asked me to name the most radical state education standards in the country, I'd point to Minnesota. I did just that last year when I singled out Rhode Island, Illinois, and Minnesota as the embodiments of our blue state education nightmare. Truly, Minnesota is the worst of the lot and I'm going to tell you why. We're reaching out to Stanley Kurtz as well. Is that correct, Chris? Correct, yes. <clears throat> Note first, however, that the story of Minnesota's nightmare education standards isn't just about Tim Walz's radicalism, although it certainly establishes that. No, the problem is that America is still largely blind to the threat that Minnesota standards represent. Minnesota's reworked education standard, steeped in the benign-sounding ethnic studies approach, are a stealth critical race theory. I, I can't read his whole uh, piece. I recommend it. You can find it on the National Review. And I have, uh, we, we alluded briefly, I believe, yesterday to just the first grade ethnic study expectations. And... And we just basically said, "Oh shucks, that's a that's a lock to ask from a first grader, right?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I have now uh, the kindergarten ethnic studies. Jesus, they have nap time. Right. We're talking about people with nap time. They're drawing stick figures and taking naps on their towels. And these are from the state. They're not made up by evil right wing people like me. Kindergarten. Analyze the ways power and language construct the social identities of race, religion, geography, ethnicity, and gender. Apply these understanding to one's own social identities and other groups living in Minnesota, centering those whose stories and histories have been marginalized, erased, or ignored. Create a personal representation, including their family and or ancestors. Discuss the choices made describing what is special and important, including strengths and assets. Describe how individuals and communities have fought for freedom and liberation against systemic and coordinated exercises of power locally and globally. 
identify strategies or times that have resulted in lasting change, organize with others to engage in activities that could further the rights and dignity of all. Retell, you're telling this to kindergartners now, retell a story about an unfair experience that conveys a power imbalance, a personal experience, or one from a story. Share what can be learned from that study. Use ethnic and indigenous study methods and sources in order to understand the roots of contemporary systems of oppression and apply lessons from the past in order to eliminate historical and contemporary injustices. Describe the importance of First Peoples, Indigenous Peoples' relationships to land, water, and the non-human world. Now we move on to first grade. All right. I think what's given uh, is the belief that's now embedded in Minnesota's educational curriculum. It's just, it's no longer a question. It is believed, and we shall work from that belief, that everything pretty much is rotten to the core and needs to be redone. Right. Because of white supremacy. Because people are white. Right. And right. white people are flawed, and therefore the founders were flawed. And I, again, I, I can only claim to have stumbled upon understanding this over the last few years, but it kept, it kept nibbling at my ankles that something's going on. I think you just explained a question that I had. So I've been... The question that I wanted to ask him was, so do you believe that America was founded on the basis of keeping the black man down? And now that you just said what you did, I realize that's the wrong question because the simple fact that America, the United States, was founded by white men is in itself the problem. Exactly. Okay. Now the founding I got it. is flawed. Now I got it. How would... Well, we can't go back and change that. And how would overthrowing the government achieve your means? That's why we really need him. Hmm. Because I can't answer that. What? Where do I fit into this? Where do you? Where does your neighbor well, the Bob? An the answer is we don't, right? Do we have to be eliminated? Which sounds <laughs> crazy. Crazy. <laughs> but what? Where? where do we fit in? And when you listen to what he said... Uh, when we played the clip, he said it's irreversible. It right. can't be changed. So if it's irreversible, what happens after the overthrow? You, you so know our, I mean? our, Well, it also means that our good intentions are meaningless. Yeah, and it also means, which I, his premise to me is flawed, because if it's irreversible, I mean, we've made a lot of progress. You know, I'm the last one, you guys know, <laughs> on this subject. But we've made a ton of progress in the last 100 and, what, uh, 50 years. On right. Race. Uh, right. So if it's ir irreversible and can't be changed, uh, he's nuts. I mean, his premise is wrong. It, it makes no sense. John, I saw that covered, and it, it, um, I don't know if it was him or Thurgood Marshall who said uh, it took way too long, 90 years at the time when I think Thurgood said it. It took 90 years, and that was too long. Well, um, and, and I think that's what he would, the professor would also say, add on another, or what it's been 60 years since he, 50 years since he said that. But humans are imperfect. Yeah, and uh, you can't overthrow the government and expect everything to be 100% perfect at that point. That's how is that going to make the United States any better exactly. for anybody? Exactly. You know, if you achieve your goal and you hurt all the white people, even the well meaning white people, how does that achieve? Your goal and what kind of country are you looking at there th then? And just as importantly, do Harris and Walls believe this? Okay, so now we're getting in the super dangerous area. This guy is in the pocket. They're, they've got their hands in each other's pockets, Walls and the professor. Mm -hmm. And he's possibly going to be the vice president of the United States of America.